In this video, we will discuss nine SAT problems you need to look out for to make sure you get the highest score possible. And to make sure you're able to solve any SAT problem that comes your way, Solvely is an AI problem solver app for math, literature, and science. Users can solve problems with Solvely just by taking a snapshot of the problem and seeing a detailed breakdown of how to solve the problem. You can use this app to boost your SAT score by understanding how to solve a problem very efficiently so you're not wasting time on a two second problem and spending two minutes on it. Pretty cool, am I right? And my favorite part is the AI tutor. You can ask the AI tutor any question about any subject 24 seven, and the AI tutor will give you personalized tutoring about that subject. So if you want to boost any of your test scores immediately, check out Solvely with the link in my description below. Now let's get into the video. So these nine ST problems, you really gotta look out for because they mess up a lot of students. Now we're gonna start off with the reading questions and then the math questions. And we're gonna talk about exactly how to get these problems right 100% of the time. So starting off with the first one, you wanna pay attention to the questions, the ST reading questions that talk about evidence for the previous questions answer. So we all see the questions that go like, which lines best support your answer to the previous question? When I see them and I got a 740 in the reading scores, this is something that really helped me a lot was I would actually just go to that second part question and skip the first part, right? So what I would do is I'll read the, the question of the first part and then go to the second part and look at which lines the question is talking about. I would go to the lines, I would read those lines and I'll see, oh wow, this piece of evidence right here gives me the answer to the question in the first problem so this way not only do i find the lines that uh, correspond to the correct answer but i also find the correct answer because you one way you can do it is just read the entire passage try to find the answer to the question and then see which lines got you the answer or you can do the faster way which is by just going to the lines mentioned because one of those set of lines of the four answer choices they give you is going to have the explanation to the answer right so it's a fast track way of finding the correct piece of evidence to answer the first question and then as a result answer the second question it's a quick hack to get those problems correct much faster inference questions is the second biggest question i feel like students miss the most in fact it's the one that i struggle with personally and what i would do is i would answer one of the inference questions on the st reading comprehension section by using evidence that wasn't really in the passage i would use my prior knowledge and try to use my own sense of understanding what you really have to understand that you can only go off what the text has told you so the example i can give you is if a if a, if a a man is walking a little girl down the street you can't just say that's her father if the text never even mentions any sort of parental relationship right it could be any man in fact it could be a guy who just found a lost girl and is walking her back to her parents so you want to just make sure you use evidence that is given in the text you don't want to try to pull out information that is not already there vocabulary questions when it asks you hey what does vociferous mean in line 67 if you do not know what that word means then you're gonna have to use your context clues if you know what that word means then most most likely you can already eliminate like 75% of the choices or 50% and you probably get the question right. Now what I usually do is when I see those uh, questions and I always read the questions first is I'll underline those words that are in question in the passage right away. And then as I read the passage, once I arrived at the underlined word, I'll ca I can just use my context clues of the sentence I am reading right now and just answer the question as I go. So this way I don't have to go back to that question later on and try to you know find the line and try to read the, the sentence before and after and try to basically reread that entire section just to answer that question it's better just to answer as you go this is the fastest way to solve problems like that now passage one passage two questions these questions are really what bake a lot of students because it's like two passages in one and one passage is already enough for us to handle am i right so passage one passage two questions what you want to do is you want to read passage one first and then answer the passage one questions then you want to read passage two and then you want to answer the passage two questions and then at the end you can go and answer passage one one and passage two questions that you know are both asked about and whatever questions so the the questions that basically tie the passages together this is a great way to uh really break down each passage make sure you get maximum accuracy on the questions for each passage before trying to attempt the questions that talk about both of them and this method right here has helped me get go from like a six out of eleven correct to a ten and eleven out of eleven correct on my passage one passage two passages so now going with math the first thing you want to focus on is systems of linear equations this is not a hard topic actually but it is just so common if you're able to answer a system of linear equations question the skills that you need to answer that question can be applied to a variety of linear equation problems in the heart of algebra section so by becoming a master of system of linear equations you are basically becoming a master at other topics as well and since heart of algebra is 40 percent of the entire math sat you want to make sure you're getting a hundred percent questions correct in heart of algebra because at that point you're basically guaranteeing yourself a 700 plus considering 
sure you don't fail every other question. Complex numbers is a second big question I want you guys to focus on with math. Just because, yes, it's not that common. It is on every SAT, but you're probably only going to face one to two questions on it, but it's free points. In fact, you're probably facing two to three questions on it, actually, and these questions are very simple. They're usually asking you to make the equation or expression to A plus BI form, or they'll ask you what like I squared is, something like that. And all you have to remember is the I's table, right? I equals square root negative one, I squared equals negative one, uh, I cubed equals negative square root negative one, the I quad equals one. If you memorize that, you're probably going to get every single one of these questions correct. And that's all you got to memorize. That, as well as multiplying by the conjugate. That's it. And because these questions are very simple to answer, you want to try to get these questions correct because it's free points. So why would you not want to get free points? Equivalent expression. This is one of my favorite problems because this is a problem type that can take students one to two minutes long. But in actuality, it should only take you 10 seconds long. And the reason being to answer equivalent qu expression questions correct really fast, all you have to do is it'll give you an X, right, in the given expression. Set it to zero and see what the resulting value is. And then set that same X to zero in each of the answer choices and make sure to give you a value of whatever the, equivalent, the given expression gave you. Because equivalent expressions, no matter what input you give it, it's the same output. So if both if an expression you give x equals zero to gives you an answer or gives you a result of one, then whichever answer choice is correct, if you put an x equals zero into that, it should also give you a resulting value of one. So whichever choices don't give you the same resulting value, you just eliminate them. And then you keep trying x's like trying zero and try one. And by then you probably already got your answer choice because by then three are already eliminated. And now we got sum of solutions. Guys, sum of solutions is another problem that can take students a lot of time because what they do is they try using the quadratic formula, then they find each solution sometimes they mess up the quadratic formula and they have to redo it and then they just spend a bunch of time that's not necessary so what you really have to do is to find the sum of solutions of a quadratic is just do negative b over a and that is the sum of the solutions that's it a two minute problem potentially four minute just done in like three seconds and that is a beauty of knowing sat tricks and finally vertex form vertex form is something that a lot of students struggle with simply because they just don't touch on it enough in fact you should after this video find your first youtube video on sat vertex vertex form, right? Or vertex form in general, because vertex form is something you have to know when it comes to quadratics. And it's going to help you when it comes to calculus and however higher levels of math you go to. But you really want to focus on getting a equation into vertex form as well as interpreting a vertex form uh, equation. Like what is the center, right? What is the, what is like the, the maximum or the minimum? Is it opening up or down? You can tell a lot by vertex form. So understanding it is really going to help you answer those questions as well as just give you a stronger understanding of quadratics in general. And just like system linear equations, if you're able to answer a vertex form question, then becoming a master at that will also help you become a master at other subtopics, subtopics for quadratics. So you want to master that as much as you can. ST promise to look out for if you have any questions, comment down below. Be sure to check out Solvely. Thank you all for watching. Peace.